World War III's begun. People better wake up to this. It's one of our top trends for 2024. Where's the economy going? The economy is on the cusp of the worst economic crisis in written history, not modern history, in written history. What are we getting involved in these wars for? America's rotting in front of your eyes. You like all the homeless? Why don't you take the subway in New York? Now they got the National Guard out there with yeah. their submachine guns over there and checking your luggage because of the crime rates. Maybe that's what you like. Don't tell me it's the greatest honor. Right? Okay, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another fantastic interview. We've got Gerald Salente back by popular demand. Uh, you probably remember the interview we did about three years ago. It was a very, very popular video. We got into some great topics, didn't we, uh, Gerald? That was uh, about three years ago now, and a lot's changed. Oh, a lot's changed. <laughs> I've been at this for 44 years. I've never, ever, ever seen a socioeconomic and geopolitical decline Mm -hmm. right in front of everybody's eyes for yeah. all to see who yeah. are in deaf, dumb, and blind. Yeah. It is a very, very crucial time for everybody to do the best they can to be in the best shape they can physically, emotionally, and spiritually, because we are in the fight for our lives. And we're going to get into all these questions. I've got some, I've got some good ones for you today. Uh, so let me just give you a, a quick intro for those of you who didn't see the interview with Gerald three years ago. I don't know who he is. Uh, so Gerald Salente also has a, a channel. He's known for forecasting global trends, particularly in economics, geopolitics, social dynamics. He's the founder and director of the Trends Research Institute and publisher of the weekly Trends Journal magazine. I just found out that Trends Journal was weekly from Gerald. I thought it was monthly. I'm actually a subscriber myself. And I asked Gerald if we can do a, a discount for you guys. So we'll talk about that later on. But he's going to give a 10% discount today um, for anyone who subscribes. But we'll, we'll get into that a little bit later. I'll give you a link and the code and everything else. Let's first see if you like what Gerald has to say. And if you do, then that's how you can get some more from it. So Gerald, I've got the um, first question for you here then. And it's on the current economic climate. Obviously, my channel is finance and economics. So we're going to focus heavily uh, there today. But we'll go into some geopolitics and, and other things as well. So the first question I've got for you is, what are your current observations regarding the state of the global economy? The debt bubble is enormous. And there's going to be a crash. You have from underdeveloped to developed nations. Developed nations are in, I think it's like $54 trillion worth of uh, government debt. The emerging markets are submerging in front of everybody's eyes. Tracking trends is the understanding of where we are, how we got here, and where we're going. And we keep making connections between different fields. So I'm just going to take a side trip and talk about the emerging markets. Go back to January 2020, the politicians launched the COVID war. That's their language, by the way. It's in your Trends Journal quoting one, one political leader around the world calling it a war. What did they do to fight the war? Well, I thought when they locked down everything, you can't go to work, close down your business. This thing's going to crash. What the hell is the matter with you, Salenti? We're going to pump in trillions and trillions and trillions and trillions of dollars of money backed by nothing and printed on nothing. We're going to artificially blow this thing up. Oh, and we're going to bring those rates down in the United States to zero. And over there in the ECB, we're going to keep them negative. We're going to keep buying up government bonds over there in Japan, or corporate bonds and government. We're going to pump this thing up. They inflated this artificially like nothing else in the history of the world. Part one and part two. Go back to the emerging markets, making connections between different fields. Oh, they just had a, a um, 
presidential or, or prime minister election or presidential election in Portugal. And the populist movement won. Oh, you mean the populist movement? You mean these movements that don't want refugees coming in? As people in the emerging, submerging markets, not emerging, submerging, they're escaping lack of basic living standards, government corruption, crime, violence. All over the world, all over the world, flooding into countries. So you have to put the whole picture together. Where's the economy going? The economy is on the cusp of the worst economic crisis in written history, not modern history, in written history. The United States, every 100 days, the debt level is going up a trillion dollars. You're in business? Who could be in business with debt levels piling on top of you? Nobody. Mm -hmm. This is a scam in front of everybody's eyes. Which brings me back to one of our top trends for 2024. A golden year for gold. It's very simple. They're all going to start having to lower interest rates. Germany's in a recession. Japan's in a recession. UK's in a recession. They're all going to lower interest rates. The lower interest rates go, the deeper the dollar falls in the United States, and the higher gold prices go. End of story, period, paragraph. Yeah, yeah. I, and I agree with you on that, uh, Gerald, in terms of in terms of your analysis there. The, the one wild card I see there is the interest rates. Yep. You see, I, I think we could see... I think we could see something different than what the market expects. So the US is expecting one and a half percent, 150 basis points drop by the end of the year. ECB is ex expecting similar. The Bank of England expecting 125. I think that we could see some shocks. And I think it was just over the last few days we had the, the new CPI come out. Sure. People weren't expecting that. And, uh, and I think if we keep seeing these inflation uh rises like we're seeing this could throw a bit of a spanner in the works because the whole dynamics is based upon look look what they've been doing they've been doing qt 95 billion a month and they they're not gonna be able to continue this they're gonna have to turn around go back to creation quantitative easing and and that's why a lot of people are saying well why hasn't the markets crashed i want to i want to ask you about that um to me it's pretty obvious why they haven't crashed we've got so much liquidity and there's a lot more on the sidelines so even after this amount of liquidity we're going to see more piling in but how do you see what you've just explained to us then how do you see this affecting global financial markets again you have slowdowns everywhere they cannot continue with these interest rate levels mm -hmm. And as inflation goes up, the value of gold goes up because you're losing the value of your currency. Mm. By the way, that's why Bitcoin, you know, we're political atheists. We don't take positions on anything. We don't, it's not what we like, what we want, what we wish yeah. for. It's what it is. What's going on, for example, you have inflation rates in, in Argentina. What is it, about 240%? So the people can't afford to buy gold, so they're buying pieces of Bitcoin. And they're doing this all over the world. Look what happened in China. Again, the numbers are there. Record year of buying gold because they see their economy collapsing in front of them. They have a real estate crisis that is not going to be solved. Hmm. Again, we look at the facts and we call it and change it as necessary. One of our... Trends was that the 20th century was the American century and the 21st century would be the Chinese century. And the reason being, because the business of America's war and the business of China's business. Now, that changed in 2020, January, Chinese Lunar New Year, they launched the COVID war. And what did they do? Three years of zero COVID policy. 
locking down the nation of 1.4 billion people. They destroyed the lives and livelihoods of hundreds and hundreds of millions of people. Now let's go back to it. Again, tracking trends is the understanding of where we are, how we got here to see where we're going, how we got here. Bill Clinton bought China into the World Trade Organization in they voted for it to become official in 2020. They officially came in two weeks after 9-11 in 2001. You look at China's GDP from 1970 to 2001. 2001, a straight line up. All the companies, not all of them, a lot of them. The manufacturing base, by the way, in the United States is only 11% of our GDP is manufacturing. They all moved to China to get slave labor back then. Europe, same thing. So what happened? Every time there's a boom, it's overbuilt. They overbuilt with the boom. It was going to come down anyway, but they made a very bad situation much worse by three years of zero COVID policy. Mm -hmm. So when you look at China, this is the world's largest importer of, of uh, Brent crude. This, this, so you have to keep looking at the big picture here and all the companies that once depended on this. They're not getting it anymore. Oh, look at the look at all the companies, the American companies whose, whose shares are going way down and, and all the luxuries, all the luxury stores uh, names whose shares are going way down because the Chinese were the ones that were traveling around the world, buying up all this stuff and they were opening up places everywhere there. So you have to put the yeah. whole picture together here. Yeah. So the worst is yet to come. Yeah. You know, that's interesting. You mentioned the luxury stores because I was talking to someone recently about this. I was in Southeast Asia, different country, Southeast Asia. And I said to my wife, look at these malls. These are beautiful uh, luxury stores everywhere. I mean, every mall had all these luxury stores. There was queues outside with a little, you know, psychological mind games with a little rope and you have to stand behind the rope and then they open the rope and you can go into the store to spend your ten thousand dollars or whatever it is there you know and not just that even the movie theater we went to watch a movie there it was only a few bucks and it was marble pillars i mean you've never seen anything like i'm saying is this a movie th art installations you sit in your seat and you, it's like a I've never sat in a movie theater seat like this. And it was unbelievable for a few dollars. And I said to my wife, the West is in real big trouble. Yeah. You're hundred percent right. Look, I'm heartbroken. I'm a Napolitano born in the Bronx, 1946. The height, the height right after the war. I'm the youngest of five, the energy, fun, laughter, my aunts, uncles, parents, may all rest in peace. Great times all the time. America is booming. People are dressed in style, looking great, feeling wonderful. Mom and pop stores everywhere. Gone. Gone. No more grocery stores. No more hardware stores. No more drug stores. No more stationary stores. They're all chains. Yeah. They're all chains. They destroy this country in front of everybody's eyes. Yeah. And it's only going to get much worse. You're going back to about Wall Street going up. Here, not my numbers, the official numbers from Oxfam. 1%. 1% owns 43% of all the global equities. Mm -hmm. Yeah. In the United States, 1% owns 54%. Mm -hmm. You put the 10% in, they own over 90%. So the plantation workers of slave land, you own nothing. And then we go back to, again, when I was a young guy, there were no such thing as venture capitalists, hedge funds, private equity groups. Didn't exist. But yeah. let's go back to the private equity groups, hedge funds, and venture capitalists. Oh, you got Coca-Cola, Pepsi-Cola. Oh, you mean owned by the same group? It's one after another. So going back to what's keeping the markets up, it's the people in charge. They're running a country near you. And they're going to do everything they can to keep it up. And again, you know, I know you have other questions, but 
with, with one of our major concerns is there's going to be a banking bust. I think so as well, Gerald. And uh, you only have to look at how the FDIC, you know, the I don't know if you know this, because not many people really looked into it. But if you think of the account of the FDIC, when we had Silicon Valley Bank, Signature, etc., the entire account, there was less than 5% left in it. When And that's why they had that emergency meeting. And there was Biden and Yellen and Powell and everyone else there. And they were absolutely, you know, they were breaking a sweat because there was nothing left in that FDIC. And then they would have had to go on to emergency measures. I think I just don't, you know, if you, what did they do? They just bailed it out. They didn't solve any of these underlying problems. We've got all of the commercial real estate, all this bad debt. We've got all these underlying issues and it's a linked global economy now. So I think I agree with you. I think it's only a matter of time until we see something else um, coming down the line. And, and I want to bring come on to my next question, actually. Actually, before we come on to the question, I want to just touch on another the, another point. What you were saying about the mom and pop business is being destroyed. One of the, th the things I like about going to other countries where that hasn't yet happened is there is so much richness of choice. And I don't know how to describe it, but you actually enjoy the experience of going into a, a small family owned restaurant, a small, you know, it could be a craft store. It could be a little pet shop. It could be anything. But because it's not this big faceless entity where the employees are, you know, like this, oh, I've just got to get through the day. Because a lot of them are mom and pop owned, you have a great experience. You have, uh, you know, this great interaction. You build a relationship with a human being who loves their what they're doing. And it's different. It's unique. And that's what I love about other countries where it is like that. But no, in in my my country, in your country, in Canada and a lot of Europe now, you don't see that. And it is really sad. I, I really do feel it. Sad. I'm sure the viewers drop a comment below. I'm sure I'm sure the viewers feel the same way. It's so sad to to see that. Um, but well, you know, I want to pick up yeah. what you said, because yeah. when they had chains, and you said all the different products. I knew a guy that used to work and he used to sell stationery. Mm, mm. And he said there were so many SKUs, meaning different kinds of products. Yeah. He said, because each different store had to attract customers, they would have different kind of items that the other person didn't have. He mm. said, now all the SKUs are gone. He said, you got only a few of every big companies making just a few things. Yeah. So you don't have the choices anymore. You don't have the variety. So you're hundred percent, very important to say, to, to make that point. Because that also put out a business, all the manufacturers that were making all these different products. As yeah. I said, only 11% of America's GDP is manufacturing based. Yeah. 70% oh, is consumer. Yeah. Yeah. It's not just that, Gerald. It's the quality. I'll give you a, a, a great example here. So I use um, pencils uh, to write with, you know, the, the sort of metal, you know, the metal ones, but it's, it's a pencil. Right. And, you know, you do the little twist and the, the, a little bit more lead comes out. I've used them for 20 years. I've always used that to write. I don't like using pens and there's some sign in something. I just find it easier to write because I, you know, the work I do, I'm researching all day. I need to just very quick. And the thing that's bugging me right now, I've, I've solved the problem, but the lead of all of this new, this new lead kept breaking. It didn't matter where I got it from. It was break as I'm writing. So I found this store that was going out of business. And, uh, and this was on the Isle of Man. And I said, hey, have you got any old lead, pencil lead? And they said, oh, yeah, we got loads in the back here. And it was nothing. They almost just gave it away. And I used it and it doesn't break. And this is might sound a silly example, but it just shows now yeah. no, the, the quality thing. of what we used to have compared to now. You know, by the way, I want to make a point with the banks go bust. One of our top, that's one of our top trends of 2024. But the other one is um, office building bust. Mm. You have your office vacancy rate in New York City, meaning nobody in them. 23% vacant. Office mm. occupancy rate, 49.5%. All the businesses that depended on commuters going out of business. 
all these buildings that no longer have tenants because the tenants said, I don't need 15 floors. I got people working from home. I don't yeah. need all this space. Yeah. Give me, give me five floors. There's going to be a banking crisis, the likes of which you've never seen. The banks are going to go bust. And it's going to hit mostly small and medium-sized banks. You have $1.5 trillion worth of commercial real estate loans in the U.S. coming to do. Mm -hmm. well, how about the U.K.? Were they everybody leaving Canary Wharf, HSBC, yeah. one after another? This is global. There's going to be a global banking crisis. And by the way, they're going to solve it. And I believe they're going to solve it by going CBDC, Central Bank Digital Currency. Mm. Russians hacked our banking system. We're coming out with a new currency. Yeah. You're going to yeah. do something like that. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's not, that might sound, uh, you know, alarmist to a lot of people, a lot of channels, but my subscribers will just say, oh, yeah, Neil, Neil and Gerald are aligned on this point. I, I believe the same thing. There's going to be, and I, I make the joke of it's going to be a, a Friday afternoon. The prime minister is going to come on. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, oh, we've got some terrible news. Yep. And uh, Monday's a bank holiday. There's been a yep. cyber attack. It was Putin. Yep. He done a cyber attack. You know, it'll be something like that. And uh, you got it. I think it'll be. And yeah. that's why, again, I'm I'm very bullish on gold and Bitcoin. Yep. Yeah, yeah. I was talking to Peter Schiff last week about this. Um, and I said, I hold both. I hold gold because it's tangible, it's physical, it's always been there as value. So I agree with him on that. Where we disagreed was on Bitcoin, but that's okay. We all have different views. Yeah. And Peter's are just a little bit more radical when he disagrees with you than others. But, you know, that is, I've done very well from Bitcoin for oh. years and years and years. So I'm not, I, you know, do, do I think... Do I agree with some of the things he says? Sure, I, of course I do. But it doesn't make any difference. If people, For me, if people believe something has value, it has value because of their belief. I go by the data and the numbers. Again, you know, we call the bottom of Bitcoin and we said, well, we break out. You know, the data is all there. So um, again, the motto of the Trends Journal is think for yourself. We yeah. give you, this is what they're reporting. This is our analysis. And here's our forecast. Mm -hmm. Do what you want to do. Let me move on to a, another question that aligns with all this, Gerald. So I was thinking about earlier today about shock events, how we have these shock events that no one saw coming. Uh, you know, even though some of us make videos and then we get censored from those videos where we make forecasts for five years of what might happen. One of those shock events was, you know, during lockdowns and, and things like that. We Another one is central bank digital currencies, I think it's going to be a shock event. Do you think there's going to be anything else, a shock event that maybe people haven't thought about? Um, yeah. And it can be anything, but is there anything? Nuclear annihilation. World War Three's begun. People better wake up to this. It's one of our top trends for 2024. The Ukraine war is not going to end. You just heard that little clown boy, uh, uh, was a Tusk over there in Poland, prime minister, saying that the uh, we're going into a pre-war movement. Mm. You have Stoltenberg saying that we have to prepare to fight for the next decade. Yeah. The UN uh, clown security chief over there. And um, it's one after another. Then we have the, the Israel war that they keep ramping up. Here we go. Europe's peaceful era has ended. Polish Prime Minister Donald Tusk has said, quote, you ready for this? The times for peace are over. The post-war era is over. We are living through new times, the pre-war era. Mm -hmm. how, how come he's not talking about peace? World War Three has begun. They asked the cat, but knew a thing or two about an atomic bomb. Albert yeah. Einstein, what kind of weapons will be used to fight the Third World War? He said, I don't know, but they'll be using sticks and stones to fight the Fourth. Yeah. Israel is bombs away now deep into Lebanon, bombs away into Syria. They blew up, what, an Iranian 
two Iranian pipelines, just blew up an energy plant. They're not going to stop. Mm -hmm. These are maniacs in charge. And my greatest concern is World War III. It's begun. There's going to be a false flag event, something that makes it, quote, official. Well, it's Japanese bomb Pearl Harbor. Oh, yeah, but how about go to history today? And in 1941, in July, Japan attacks in December, President Franklin Roosevelt seized all Japanese assets. You know why? Those dirty Japanese invaded French Indochina. Why those dirty Japanese? French Indochina? Why the French have every right to be there? In Lambe uh, Cambodia, Laos, and Vietnam, stealing their rubber tin, pillage and rob? Why, how dare those Chinese go in there? And then the United States, England, and the Dutch put sanctions on Japan. Japan lost three quarters of their global trade and 88% of their imported oil. This is a fact. You could look it up. Mainstream media, 88%. You mean they only import 100%. They don't have any there. Can't understand why they bombed Pearl Harbor. Mm. That's what we're going to see. There's going to be a false flag event, a blowing up of a nuclear plant. There's going to be something. 88% of the people 88% of the American people supported the Afghan war, the longest mm -hmm. war in American history that we lost, cost trillions of dollars and killed hundreds of thousands of people. Yeah. So the people follow their leaders to war. Again, you go back to COVID. We got the facts in your trends journal of one person after another. I don't know if I can have it over here saying it's a war. It's a war. It's a war. Boris Johnson. Donald Trump, Macron, every one of them calling it a war. When they say war, the people march off to war. So you ask me what the major one is, mm. that's the major point. Do you see any other major global powers having some sort of conflicts? Um, you know, what about what we've been hearing with China, US, and how Biden basically didn't use any diplomacy? He just said, yeah. If they attack Taiwan, we're going to we're going to go to war with them. I mean, apart from something like that, is there any other major powers you're you're concerned about? I mean, it sounds to me like what my major said, concern is the United States and NATO. NATO what goes yeah. on between China and Taiwan is none of my business. It's been going on what since the Ming Dynasty. Yeah, what's been going on between between. Um, Russia and Ukraine. What is this going on since Catherine the Great? Mm, mm. I mean, all the facts are there. You know, once upon a time, there was a person that was the first president of the United States, George Washington. A real man that fought, not like these little boys that couldn't fight their way out of a paper bag that talked tough. Yeah. This is his farewell address, part of it. It is our true policy to steer clear of permanent alliance with any portion of the foreign world. Observe good faith and justice toward all nations. Cultivate peace and harmony with all. The nation which indulges toward another and habitual hatred. I'll stop right there. When I was a kid, they had us hiding under a desk because the Russians were going to bomb us. Habitual mm -hmm. hatred. Hate those Iranians. I don't know. Anyway, or an habitual fondness. Oh, Israel's our ally. We'll do anything for them. Is in some degree a slave. It is a slave to the animosity or to its affection, either of which is sufficient to lead it astray from its duties and interests. Mm -hmm. Got it? Anything else has to be said? What are we getting involved in these wars for? America's rotting in front of your eyes. You like all the homeless? Why don't you take the subway in New York? Now they got the National Guard out there with yeah. their submachine guns over there and checking your luggage because of the crime rates. Hey, how about all the migrants flooding the streets? How about the rotted infrastructure? 
How about 63% of the people in the USSA living paycheck to paycheck? How about the credit card debt exploding to well over a trillion dollars? Again, the national debt, a trillion dollars more every hundred days. But no, we got money for war. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. You you just covered exactly what I was, uh, well, not those exact words, but what I was about to go into. And uh, I think a lot of my subscribers would uh, agree with some of the sentiments he said there. And uh, we look around as Western, I guess we can say, people, and we see we see the the breakdown. We see the infrastructure. We see the refugee crisis. We see people coming in from other countries who I get interviewed on the street. They're interviewed and they say, "Oh no, I'm not from a a poor background. I'm not seeking asylum." And then they're complaining. There was a funny video on there. Uh, on the news is this person this group of guys they were doing a protest they were complaining because they'd come from um they were kurdish and they were quite wealthy guys and they said back in our home countries you know this is what the dogs would sleep in a room like you know it was all this sort of stuff and then what happened afterwards was they were talking about the um the soldiers that were on the street the highest percentage of homeless in the uk is ex-military and you know a lot of them on the street so i i i think a lot of people understand what you're saying because we see it we're seeing that the infrastructure is falling apart there's not enough money for citizens and the healthcare system is has gone to crap and people aren't being looked after but but then there's open borders which is a real a real challenge it it really is so yeah, you know, there's a reason for the open borders, by the way. Go ahead. Go ahead. Um, one of my books, this one over here, Trends 2000. This was an international bestseller. Again, I wrote this in 96, and the internet revolution began like around 94, 93, 94. They needed cheap labor, and they passed this thing called H-1B visas. Again, you go back to my generation. I remember as a kid, I hearing my parents talking about they wanted to bring their cousin, cousin Constantino in from Napoli, and they couldn't do it because the restrictions were so tight. What happened then, again, my generation, the Vietnam War, they're drafting all the guys. They needed more people. That's when they started first letting loose on the immigration. Number two, H-1B visas. They don't want to pay these people all this money. They're bringing them from China and India to work in high tech. I mean, look at the guys ahead of Google, Pichai. You know, they were bringing them in like crazy. Number three, facts are there. Again, in your magazine, the Trends Journal. Germany came out with an article how great it is that they have more refugees and immigrants because there's a labor shortage. So now let's go back to what we were talking about. All things are connected. We were talking about the chains. This is, I call what's happened where plantation workers of slave land here. This is better than the plantation system because back in the plantation system, you had to house them and feed the slaves. Now you just give them enough money, yeah, get out of here and come back tomorrow. You go to I don't care which one it is, name it. Target, Walmart, Home Depot, Lowe's, Kroger, anyone, go there. Help wanted, help wanted. These people have, every time, I don't go into any of those places. I only go, I got to go into to Home Depot to get hardware stuff. My heart breaks when I see the people. My heart breaks. These used to be all hardware stores everywhere. And now these people have no lives. They yeah. want more cheap labor. End of story. You, you, you don't think it's anything to do with, I see a lot of comments on the videos 
Some people think it's more than that. Some people think yeah, they say to get elected in, to get votes. Nah. People aren't going to go out. Not, not necessarily votes. I mean, yeah, that that could be one. Yeah. We've heard recently about that more votes, but other people think it could be to do with the military. People are being allowed in because now they're, they're, there's a there's an opportunity. yeah. They're coming out with that now. It got this yeah. guy Pat Ryan over here. He's the guy over here, an arrogant guy. Who was in the he was in the uh, West Point. He's a congressman. Mm. The greatest honor for an American man is to serve in the military. Who are you talking to? Mm. Who are you talking to? Maybe that's what you like. Don't tell me it's the greatest honor, right? I launched Occupy Peace. I believe in the founding fathers. I don't believe in the military industrial complex. It's a small part. It's a tiny part considering the hundreds, millions coming in. What are you going to get? 40,000 tops, 50,000? Nothing, mm. nothing. I want cheap labor. Cheap labor. We need them to clean the hotels. We need them to. We need. We need. We need them. We need cheap labor. Okay. Let Let me ask you this then. Let's say that's the the case. Why would they not just give visas? Why would they not just say, "Hey, we can give you visas around the world to countries where the you know the the standard of living is very low." Why not just let those give them? Because the people them. don't want that to happen. And the people would protest that. Mm. So they go through the other line and letting them all come in. And now let's make this clear. You, you talked about with the United States confront China in a war. You can't stop people from coming over the border. You haven't won a war since World War II. You're going to confront China? Who are you talking to? Mm. And by the way, Occupy Peace. There were over a thousand military bases in over 90 countries. Occupied peace, again, I found this over a decade ago, is to close all the military bases overseas and use the troops to secure the homeland. That's one of the first things. Yeah. I want to go on to another question, and it's more of a scenario that I want to just play out with you here. So what I'm ga gaining from hearing you is that you don't have a a good outlook on the U.S. You think it's going to collapse by the sound of things. So here's what I want to sort of ask you then. So and I asked Peter Schiff the same, but we didn't really get into it deeply. So I want to ask you about, let's say the U.S. loses its reserve currency status and it happens today. There's an announcement or there is no announcement. And it just loses its reserve currency status. What does the U.S. look like tomorrow? And what does it look like in the weeks or even months ahead? Go back to your Trends Journal last year, the death of the dollar. When the dollar dies, America goes. Simple as that. And the dollar is going to die. You have all these BRIC nations that are fed up with the United States economic and military hegemony. You're going to see more and more countries backing their currency by gold. The currencies that are backed by gold are going to be the currencies of choice. The United States, go, let's, again, all things are connected. Go back to 1973, 74. They put an oil embargo on when, this, when the Israel war began back then. Nearly crashed the economy. They put an embargo on oil. If the Middle East war keeps air ramping up, and by the way, one of our top trends in your Trends Journal for 2023 was Middle East meltdown. We warned this was going to happen this year. You're going to see oil prices go to Brent crude above $130 a barrel. And as we're speaking now, it's around 84. Mm -hmm. That's going to crash equity markets and economies. Do you want to just explain why that is? Because people will hear that. And I've mentioned it once before. But do you want to just explain why that price of oil will crash economies? Oh, because you're going to see, well, again, if if they did what they did back in 1973, that was the beginning of the inflation spike. When they when they had an embargo on oil, you had lines, you couldn't get you couldn't get gas. Yeah. They're going to do the same. If they do the same thing, if you have Saudi Arabia, Kuwait, all these countries say, no, we're, we're locking down until this Israel war ends. Yeah, That's, because the, again, the data is there. 
You look at Jap- uh, Chinese exports. You look at their uh, the PMI. You look at you look at Japan's PMI. They're all in negative territory. Yeah. So now you're going to make a bad situation worse by rising inflation at a time when economies are going down. And by the way, our forecast is, no, it won't be stagflation, stagnant economies and rising inflation. It'll be dragflation. Economies drag down as inflation goes up. And going back to gold and you're, you're about the dollar, that's going to be the death of the dollar is going to happen when they start lowering interest rates. The only reason the dollar is strong is because of high interest rates. Yeah. And you're bu- buying these bonds. You know, it's a, it's a safe bet at this point. Yeah. You're getting over 4% in your money. It was up to 5 So when the dollar goes down, this is going to be the end. It's going to be the beginning of the end of the U.S. dollar. And by the way, the United States became the country that it hated and our founding fathers fought against. And that's the U.K., Great Britain. What, what killed Great Britain? The sun never sets on the British Empire. We're slaughtering people all over the world. Not a war we don't love. After World War I, that was the beginning of the end of the pound and the beginning of the dollar. America, all it is is war, 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 war. Over a trillion dollars a year when you put the, when you put the security, F- CIA, uh, Homeland Security, into the military industrial complex, the budget's over a trillion dollars a year. Mm-hmm. So it's going to, it's the death of the dollar, just the way it was the death of the pound. Yeah. Do you, do you, do you have a timeline on? You never tell. No. It, it could happen tomorrow. Are you ready to move on to US election? Whoever wins, the people lose. They call this a democracy. We go kill people all over the world to give them freedom and democracy. You mean we we only had a choice to, of two parties for a hundred and how many years? I want to move on to the next question, uh, Gerald, and it's on technology. And I want to ask you, how do you see all the technology at the moment uh, having an impact on? Let's let's talk about society as a whole. We can talk about business if you like, but. How do you see it having an impact on technology on in terms of society as a whole? What do you what do you see there? Are you seeing what I'm seeing? Mass job losses? Well, I'm seeing it already, so I, I guess you're seeing it as well. But what is it that you're seeing if you were to look five to ten years out, apart from the the war aspect that we're talking about, which I also see, I mean, this is just fourth turning cycle, really. Uh, and whichever model you want to follow. But what do you see the impact of technology? Because we're having this convergence is what I'm seeing. We've had all the the health stuff, which we'll put to the side. We've now got all the military stuff. We've got the debt bubble, which is ready to pop at any time. And now we've got AI, the advent of AI and automation and robotics. How do you see this playing out? And what impact is AI and robotics going to have on society? Once upon a time, there was this thing called the King's James Bible. And in the King's James Bible, it says the meek shall inherit the earth. Mm -hmm. They misspelt it. The geeks have inherited the earth. Technocrats. Look at them. Look what they look like. Look at them with their black shirts and T-shirts and jeans. Look how the... The decline of America right in front of your eyes. Once upon a time, there used to be things called musicians. Yeah, they played things called instruments. Mm. All right? Dead. God. God. All tech. Yeah. Every people walking down the street, no yeah. more hello. Young kids, infants. Yeah. Tech is the, every week in the Trends Journal, we have a whole section AI. And you go back last year, one of our top trends for 2023 AI, we own you. Trends are born, they grow, they mature, reach old age, and die. This one has just been born. Again, I mentioned back when the Internet Revolution began. 
you know, for real in the early 1990s, we couldn't be doing what we're doing right now. No. Uh, StreamYard or whatever, you know, Zoom. Uh, you, you you look at a, you used to look at a, a, a movie or something or some it would, it would, it would go on. All right. That's where AI is. And you're a hundred percent right. By the way, every week, this is our 75th week of doing it. Yeah. We have job losses in the trends journal. Yeah. Yeah. This week, IBM announced massive job losses that they're going to be firing people because of AI. Replacing. Reuters. Reuters. The big news agency investing, I think, $3 billion or something number. I forget the exact number mm -hmm. into AI. So they don't need reporters. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's what, it's, it's what <laughs> the industrial revolution did to when you used to have workers making things and then it became manufacturing. And now we're going to the next level of that. It's robotic AI. It's going to be taking over a lot. It's so it's from from you name it, from from healthcare to media to and making anything, any manufacturing. Yeah. To, to education. AI. It's it again. We call things the way they are. This is your Trends Journal back in 1999 when it was a quarterly and now it's a weekly. This is fall of 1999. Dot com this. Dot com overload will short circuit many high expectations for huge profits in internet commerce, entertainment, and a wide array of dot com services following the holiday season. Many of today's high flying internet stocks, the highest IPOs, Hottest IPOs and newly emerging IPO wannabes will have begun their deep descent from their overvalued heights. Called the dot com bust, said it would bust by the second quarter of 2000. The dot com, they were making up stuff back then. It didn't make any sense when the internet revolution began. This is very different with AI. This is very different, and it's going to be massive. And in massive control of the people. Yeah. Coming back to what you said about instruments, actually, and musicians, this is one thing I've noticed is you're not really, I, I think the next generation are not really going to be musicians anymore. Because if you think about music, I, I play the piano, for example, I learned at a very young age. And I remember how difficult it was to learn to play and to pass all those grades all the way up to grade eight and you know all that sort of stuff you have to go the way the, all the way through you can't just you know you can't just decide i'm just going to play a grade eight piece or something you've really got to master it and here's what i've been thinking about ai recently this stuff doesn't create i know people say it creates music it doesn't really it takes things that are already in existence which people have have created from their own being their own self and their own creativity and they've created this beautiful music and they've learned to play the instruments and they've gone through all the process the ai doesn't do any of that so what's going to happen Sean, it's dead it's gone already it's like it's like going to olive garden and calling it italian food all right <laughs> uh i've been to olive garden so i i understand and expensive as well expensive i mean uh, you know I'm, not, I, I'm an italian i cook you know what are you kidding me with this stuff and that's what the muse it's the same thing and again the younger generation this is their life ai is their who they are they're a high they're, they're, that's that's their life so this is fine for them well, what about jobs though gerald what about jobs? Again, plantation workers of Slavelandia. Where where are the people going to go? That's that's what I'm that. saying. They're going to they're going to get lousy jobs or no jobs, and you're going to see more and more refugee crisis and more and more homeless. Mm. 
it's not i mean i i've looked at it in lots of different ways and i can't see a solution to this i really can't and i, and I tried to think about what happened when electricity was created <clears throat> and all the factories of course brought in electricity it put loads of people out of work well they found more jobs but we didn't have the crises that we have today so i can't really see how this is going to be a positive thing people it's not jobs it's going to be negative again it, again the geeks have inherited the earth i mean look at look at these guys you look up to a gates of zuckerberg i mean look at these guys look like mm. peach eye i mean are you kidding me cook yeah they dress like slobs look like jerks yeah and attitudes again there's no vibe to me, the only thing that would change it is the Renaissance. Yeah. And uh, bringing back the beauty, you know, what followed the Black Plague? People got hit to the scene. They were killing themselves. Over 60% of Europe was wiped out. Yeah. They say in Italy, to again, the leader of the Renaissance, to quality of their work, alla Romana, alla Antica, in the manner of the Romans and the ancients, in the manner of the Romans and the ancients, to describe what they were making, not like ugly crap that they were doing then mm -hmm. and we have to bring back that to me that's the only thing that'll change it well that's it, that's but it happened you know maybe if the billionaires started putting you know a couple of billion in for peace and beauty and joy and life liberty and the pursuit of happiness it could happen but they don't put a penny into it i'm concerned world war three wipe us out before then i think yeah it, de it depends you know i always tell my subscribers have a backup plan i was in my uh, i was i did a big long post in my private community about bug out and where i'm going and you know make sure and if you're in this age group you know be careful gentlemen ladies and gentlemen not just men anymore because you're going to get drafted you're not going to be able to escape people think oh yeah i'm just going to jump on a plane and a, or a boat no no they will lock down everything you will be you will be drafted this um, is different there's yeah. a farewell address, uh, uh, not farewell address, a John F. Kennedy, when he was president, he makes a speech to the graduating students at American University in June of 1963. July, August, September, October, November, Jack, you're dead. It was all about peace. All about peace. He said, if we go to war with the Soviet Union, Earth will be destroyed in 24 hours. Mm -hmm. We have a nuclear war with them. This is 1963. And it will be destroyed for generations. That's We are on the cusp of this. We have evil people running a country near you. They're out of their minds. You don't ask a murderer why they're a murderer. They're mentally deranged people. Who do you look up to? A little Katzon Macron? A little nobody Sunak? A Biden? Who? Look at the Ooh. clown show. Now they got that guy in, in the UK. They brought him back, Cameron, as yeah. their secretary, their, their foreign affairs, whatever. Oh, yeah. the, you mean the Cameron that, along with Sarkozy, Obama, uh, overthrew the overthrew Libya, the richest country in Africa, where people had more rights and benefits than most of the world. Oh, that group. Oh, brought to you by NATO as well. They're murderers. They're crazy people. Oh, and the idiocy of. Oh, we got to build a bomb shelter. Oh, your life will be beautiful after nuclear annihilation. You'll come out. Everything will be just rosy as can be. Who'd mm -hmm. want to live in a time like that? Yeah. Let's let's finish up, Gerald, with the, uh, looking at some sort of financial aspects. And I got a couple of questions then. What guidance would you give to people? let's call this non-financial advice but what sort of guidance would you give to people right now who are concerned let's say they have investments or they've got capital they, you know they've got numbers on a screen in the bank 
obviously we talked about gold that's always uh something i i i am an advocate for as well but what would you as just as a general non-financial advice what would you say to people um ju just to help guide them a little bit here then i like real estate as well yeah there are hot spots to go to a matter of fact i just bought another building and i bought it because it's next to one of my 1763 dr jensen house mm. so i bought that one next to it because i have a vision of what i could do with this by expanding the yard and making it and i now i have i have seven buildings that connect so where i am in kingston it's one of the hot spots of new york they're flooding out of the city because of the high crime rates, the high cost of living. Young people with children are coming up here. And the place I said, there's more pre-revolutionary war stone buildings here than anywhere in America. So it's a hot market. So I'm still investing in real estate and in hot markets. So yeah. that's another one for people to consider. Yeah. Not, I wouldn't touch any commercial real estate. And I'd be very careful about being in cities, big cities. Yeah, yeah. But I would look for the exurbs and suburbs of where it is the best to go. Yeah, yeah. I've just purchased some more real estate this year as well myself. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. Mine were, were holiday cottages because we have a huge demand where we are. And there's just not, you know, so that was, that's what I looked at. Okay, good. I just want to finish then by telling people a little bit about the trends journal and that uh, what you said you would do beforehand. So I'll put a link below the video. Or I can even pin it in the comment as well description. So you can go to trendsjournal.com forward slash subscribe. And the coupon code is WART, i.e. Neil McCoy, WART, so W-A-R-D. And Gerald's very kindly offered a 10% discount for everybody today. So if you want to just go and, you know, even if you just try it out for a little while, see what you think of it. And yeah. um, you got some 30 day money back guarantee. Oh, and there you go. The, way, the New York Times is $4 a day. I'm lucky to get a trend worthy article from it. The Wall Street Journal has gone downhill deeply. They're firing people like crazy, hardly getting any data from there. And I need data. $5 a day. The Trends Journal, $2.60, excuse me, with a discount, $2.50 a week. Yeah. A week. Yeah. Nothing. Nothing. A lousy cup of coffee. And, and again, if you don't like it, you get a 30-day money-back guarantee. And guaranteed, you look at the comments on YouTube, you look at what people say about it. And I'm not bragging, but because if anybody could show me, show me a magazine that yeah. tells you what in the world is going on what to do and what's next and you i'd love to see it it's yeah. the only trend magazine in the world yeah well as i said i'm a subscriber of of the magazine myself i don't read it weekly but um you know i do read it from time to time and it's it's a, it's a great it's a great um publication so yeah i'd say give it a try guys if you um would like to know more about gerald and the trends and follow a lot of this and apart from that, Gerald, anything you want to leave us with or that well, was well, just one more thing about the magazine. Yeah. Um, you can listen to it too. Okay. So that's, that's the other thing. Yeah. The, what I'd like to leave everybody with is, as I said, get in the best shape you can. Uh, we're in the time of our life, physically, emotionally, and spiritually do what you can and do try to do something positive every day to help somebody in any way you can. You yeah. know, we, we're, we're all in this together. So let's bring the human spirit to the level where it really should be and, and not where it is. So right. again, united we stand, divided we die. And if you want to donate to Occupy Peace, we have rallies all the time. We're going to have a couple coming up. And again, but do something positive every day to try to help somebody that you can. Okay. All right. Thanks. Thanks, Gerald. And uh, for everyone else, thanks for watching. Really appreciate it. Take care. God bless you and your families. And we'll see you next time.